Hey internet, this is Jacob Clifford and welcome to Ecom Movies. Avengers Endgame surpassed Avatar as the biggest money maker of all time and you know, I'm kind of a fan. <laughs> and I really wanted to make an episode of Ecom Movies but I needed to find some economics in the movie and it turns out it wasn't even that hard. Before we begin, the goal of this video, like all my videos, is not just to talk about and debate politics. I'm not trying to push an ideology. I'm trying to help you think like an economist. To help you appreciate the complexity of economic issues and to help you realize that things are very rarely black and white, there's a lot of gray. Case in point, income inequality. Frustrations over income inequality. There's an inequality in this country right now mm -hmm. that is threatening to tear us apart. Obviously income inequality just feels wrong and justifying it or promoting it just seems immoral. I don't know why everyone believes that, but that isn't true. Endgame earned over $2.7 billion in the box office. At the same time, a different movie called The Missing Link was in theaters and it made about $25 million, which was about 1% of what Endgame brought in. So question, is this wrong? Is it immoral that Marvel brought in so much more money than other movie studios? Should Marvel and Disney be expected to share some of those profits with other companies? You're probably gonna have a hard time finding someone who's gonna say yes, because in business, income inequality is not only acceptable, it's good. It's what makes the system work. Profit is a reward that businesses get for making awesome goods and services, and it tells them society wants more, keep doing what you're doing. And the best part about it is we actually get more of the things that we want. And that right there is the invisible hand of the free market system. So when a business makes a less profitable product or they go out of business, no one gets upset or claims that income inequality is immoral. It's just too bad, so sad. Next time, make a better product. In fact, the immoral thing would be to force successful businesses to pay less successful ones. But is that true in other areas of society? And that's where ideologies come in and things start to get political. Rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. Those that champion free markets, the neoliberal economists, don't see any problem with income inequality. What's true for businesses must also be true for individuals. If people like Zuckerberg or Musk or Robert Downey Jr. make an insane amount of money, well, that's okay. It's not like they stole it. They earned it by creating things that society actually wants. They made all that money by making people's lives better off and it would be immoral to take it. On the other side, you have left-leaning economists and democratic socialists that see outrageous salaries for CEOs and the increasing gap between the rich and the poor as immoral. Did Robert Downey Jr. really work 900 times harder than the people that created the sets for the movie or that did the makeup? And if he did, then what about Vin Diesel? Is it fair that we have all these poor people on one side and someone who's paid millions for saying the same three words over and over again? I Notice that both sides have good points and it's not just black and white, it's gray. People are inherently unequal. Some are stronger, smarter, prettier, richer, healthier, or more talented, or just luckier than others. I'm lucky. That's not a superpower. Yeah, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yeah, it is. My point here is you will always have income inequality because people don't have equal strengths, skills, and abilities. And there's all sorts of pay gaps that reflect this and have nothing to do with work ethic. Some just have to do with physical traits. People that are tall, thin, attractive, and healthy are paid more than people that are short, fat, ugly, and sick. Is that fair? Can we get rid of it? Should we? These are great questions and none of them are black and white. And of course there's the gender pay gap, but that too is not as simple as the media might suggest. It's 100% true that women on average are paid less than men. In fact, it's about 80%. And it looks like women are being discriminated against in the labor market, in some cases they are. But the data suggests that much of the gender pay gap has less to do with gender and more to do with having and raising kids. It turns out the wages are lower for whichever parent is the primary caregiver. It's what economists call the child wage penalty. But why is there a wage penalty for having kids? Well, let's look at the movie. After the snap, all those dead people were mourned for months or even years, but eventually people had to get back to work. And all those missing workers and managers and CEOs needed to be replaced. But what happened five years later when all those people came back to the labor force? Maybe some of them got their old job back, but many probably didn't have a job to come back to. And if they did get a job, it was a different position at a lower wage. And the same thing happens when mothers or fathers leave the labor force for a time to raise kids. And even if they never actually leave the labor force, they still have to take care of those kids. And in many cases, accept lower wages in exchange for more flexible, family-friendly schedules. No amount of money ever bought a second of time. 
The point is that having a kid often results in a wage penalty that's paid by the primary caregiver, which in our society is disproportionately women. So is gender income inequality unfair or immoral? Well, economists would be the first to point out that it depends. I'm so confused. These are confusing times. <laughs> if men or society at large are forcing women to have children and unwillingly become primary caregivers, then yes, the gender pay gap is unfair. Women's income and future opportunities are being sacrificed by an unfair, unjust patriarchal system. But if women voluntarily choose to have children or are willing to become the primary caregiver, then the gender pay gap isn't necessarily unfair. It just reflects the voluntary decisions of women that are weighing the benefits and costs of having kids. Notice that in both cases, women's wages fall, but whether that's unfair or not depends if women are being forced to be primary caregivers or if they're choosing to become primary caregivers. It's okay. Ideally, mothers or fathers shouldn't have to sacrifice future earnings to have kids, but if there's only one thing you learn in economics is you can't have it all. A soul for a soul. Okay, let's go back and look at general income inequality because there's something I wanna show you called the Lorenz Curve. It's how economists visualize income inequality and to help you remember it, just think of Captain America's shield. Here it is, on the bottom you have the percent of households. So we got 20% of the people, 40%, 60%, 80 and 100% of the people. Up here on the top, we have the percent of total income. So we have 20% of the income, 40%, 60, 80, and 100% of the income. This diagonal line represents the idea of perfect income equality. So 20% of the people earn 20% of the income. 40% earn 40% of the income, 60% earn 60%, 80 earn 80, and of course, 100% of the people earn 100% of the income. Perfect income equality. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. But of course, incomes aren't equal, and the Lorenz Curve shows what people actually earn. In the US, in 2017, the poorest 20% of households didn't earn 20% of the income. They earned a total of about 4% of the income. The next poorest 20% earned about 9% of the income. So if you combine the first 20 with the second 20, you get 40% of the households earning about 13% of the income. 60% of the households earn about 28% of the income, and 80% earn about 50% of all the income earned in the United States. This means that the richest 20% of Americans earn about half of all the income. Okay, this looks pretty black and white. Obviously, we have a problem with income inequality. But not so fast, the Lorenz Curve is just a snapshot. It doesn't show income mobility or how incomes change over time. For example, in 2001, I was just getting out of college and I was broke and I made $8,920 the entire year. That was more than $2,600 below the poverty line. So I was way down here, but my income hasn't stayed there. It's increased over time. The vast majority of Americans don't stay in any one income group their entire life. They move around. Many people who are once poor get careers and start to earn higher incomes and fresh new poor people that are just getting the labor market or coming out of school or just starting their careers take their place. You don't have any money. Attachment to the material is detachment from the spiritual. I'll tell the guys at the deli. Maybe they'll make you a metaphysical ham on rye. When you look at the Lorenz Curve, it looks like there's a group of people that are super poor and destitute their entire lives. But over time, these are usually not the same people. In fact, one study said that 56% of Americans will spend at least one year in the top 10% of income earners. And 73% of Americans will spend at least one year in the top 20%. Now, obviously, if you start rich, it's a lot easier to stay rich and if you start poor, it's a lot harder to become rich. But my point is, income inequality is not black and white. There's a lot of gray. The Lorenz Curve is a great way to visualize income inequality, but keep in mind that people in incomes change over time. Now let's go back and look at Thanos' plan. Now he goes out of his way to explain that it's fair because it's equal. Titan was like most planets. Too many mouths, not enough to go around. And when we faced extinction, I offered a solution. Genocide. But random, dispassionate, fair to rich and poor alike. But is it fair? Is it fair that after the snap, a terminally ill mother survived while her healthy child died? And what about mass murders? Is it fair that they survive the snap while innocent people die? Yes, his plan is equal, but that doesn't necessarily make it fair. Economists know that equality, like all worthy endeavors, should never be an unchecked goal. You're still gonna have to weigh the benefits 
and costs. And that's why you should learn and love economics. It shows you that our problems are more complex and nuanced than most people think. If you think like an economist, you understand why society's problems, no matter what anyone tells you, can't just be solved with a snap. Hey, thanks so much for watching this episode of Ecom Movies. Take a look over here if you want to watch more episodes. Also, let me know in the comments what you think about this episode and what movie you want me to do next time. Thanks for watching my videos. Until next time.